So in this one, we're gonna be taking a look at a pair of Linux distros and comparing them against each other. The Linux distros in question are Fedora 36 Workstation and Ubuntu 22.04 Jammy Jellyfish. We're using the mainline versions of both distros, so no spins or anything like that. And we're looking at it on real hardware, starting with the installer and ending with some gaming and benchmarks. The machine we're testing with is a Gigabyte Bricks running an Intel Celeron J4105, so not exactly a powerhouse, and it has Intel UHD 600 integrated graphics. So don't expect any crazy 3D gaming stuff going on. This is kind of a basic test. But unlike some of the other benchmarks and comparisons I've done in the past, I'm interested in the finer details and specs of these two distros. So let's get right in and start with the installers. I think everyone knows about Ubuntu. It's kind of the premier enterprise Linux distro provided by Canonical. It is a community project, of course, but most of the development is done by Canonical and it is, for all intents and purposes, an enterprise distro. It's been using the same installer called Ubiquity for quite some time, but a new installer that's based on Google's Flutter toolkit is in the works and it should come out with the next release, so this one is still Ubiquity. Looks pretty darn good though. The installer is pretty customizable though. You can choose to download updates before installing, install restricted extras like codecs and stuff, you can also choose a different file system scheme, including ZFS or set up an encrypted partition. Honestly, pretty standard stuff for an install, but it's nice that it's right here, old school style built into the installer like it always has been. The install itself actually took quite a long time at about 15 minutes. Now, this isn't exactly a fast machine, but it is running an SSD and it took 15 minutes, which is kind of a long time for an install, honestly. So Fedora 36 is a little bit different. Fedora itself is not an enterprise distro, but it has bones based on an enterprise distro, and that is, of course, Red Hat. Fedora is effectively a Red Hat project, though again, it's actually a community project that is sponsored by Red Hat, but it's probably more community driven than Ubuntu is. And much like Ubuntu, it has its own installer. Fedora's installer is called Anaconda, and it's been around forever. It's basically like a one and done installer. You select a disk and make sure that it has enough space on it and it basically goes. You can choose the file system by going to the advanced options, but I think most people will just leave it default. And the default file system is BTRFS, though you can choose EXT4. The install seemed slightly faster at about 10 minutes and both Fedora and Ubuntu have a sort of post-install onboarding Gnomes is way more comprehensive. It wants you to set up your user account and it lets you set up some third-party repos, but it doesn't actually say what those repos are. It just sets them up. Even though both Fedora and Ubuntu use Gnome, which we'll talk about in the next segment, Ubuntu does not use the Gnome bootstrap onboarding startup thing. It uses its own. But now that we've got the install portion out of the way, let's start comparing the desktops. This is the Gnome desktop on both distros. Fedora 36 and Ubuntu 22.4 running GNOME 42.4. As you can see from the table, they are pretty darn similar to each other. They both use GNOME. They're both using Mutter, which is built into GNOME. They're also both using Wayland by default, so there's no X going on here unless we launch an X application, we'll use an embedded thing. But as you can see just by looking at them, the themes are quite a bit different. Fedora is known for shipping just a bare bones, basic, default, standard, vanilla, GNOME, install, and setup. And honestly, it's not bad. For a lot of people say that GNOME is very like Fisher Price style with its big chunky header bars. I actually kind of like that. I think the overall design and feel of the desktop is really nice and, and welcoming. But one thing I can say about it is that it also feels very mobile. And that I am not a fan of. I can look at the desktop and appreciate it and like it, but when I start using it, it has a very mobile-esque workflow and that's just not for me. But that's not a dig on Fedora. I could say the same thing about Ubuntu. But what I can say about Ubuntu's look and feel is that it's very desktop oriented, at least more so than Fedora. Ubuntu also has a whole host of different styles and colors that you can apply to the desktop to make it feel more like you. 
Fedora has no such thing. In fact, all you can do on Fedora is change the theme from light to dark. And because GNOME is kind of in a weird state right now where it has some GTK3 stuff, some GTK4 stuff, not all of the applications behave properly. Like for example, if I have the GNOME help app in the background and I change the theme, it will just crash. Now curiously, it does not do that on Ubuntu. Fedora's terminal, between the colors that they chose, the font that they chose, everything, it is so incredibly inviting. Not that Ubuntu's isn't, but sometimes that weird eggplant purple theme just clashes really hard with third-party stuff. All right, that's enough about the look and feel. Let's talk about the specs. I'm not gonna get too opinionated on what I think is better or worse, but there are some differences that just don't really make a difference enough. But I think that we can all agree that a almost 10 second difference in boot time, one is definitely better than the other. Now I will say that a 23 second boot time is still pretty darn long. I got this from systemd analyze blame and somebody during a live stream told me about this and it basically shows you the entire chain of events leading up to a login. A big part of the wait is actually Plymouth, which is the boot screen and it's supposed to happen asynchronously like in a non-blocking sort of way, but it seems like the boot screen itself is adding startup time quite a bit actually. And for some reason it's quite a bit worse on Fedora bringing the total boot time from like a just a normal restart to 34 seconds. Fedora's install size was crazy low at 5.3. Ubuntu's is 10 gigabytes, so Ubuntu's payload is quite a bit bigger. The memory usage was basically the same. Ubuntu's was a hair above one gigabyte, whereas Fedora's was 1.2 gigabytes. The average CPU load over 15 minutes is a calculation. If you run the uptime command, just take those three numbers, add them together and then divide them by three and that's your average. The average CPU temps after 15 minutes, Ubuntu was somehow cooler by a couple degrees, but I ran these tests a lot of times and that was the average that we came to. So Ubuntu actually ran cooler for some reason. Kind of interesting. Ubuntu actually had fewer running tasks and processes and they had basically the same number of threads running. So looking at the numbers in this table, it would appear that Ubuntu is technically a lighter weight distro than Fedora 36. So that's enough about the specs. Let's talk about the default applications. Now, this isn't a very exciting section because both of these distros run GNOME. They run the exact same version of GNOME and they run basically the same set of default applications. Now, I'm not gonna go into every application installed, just kind of the basic ones that everybody would expect to see and use on a distro. So that's a file manager, text editor, and so on. Just like the switch from GTK3 to GTK4, GNOME is kind of in a weird spot where they're also trying to rename everything. Nautilus has become GNOME files. The text editor is called gedit, or it used to be called gedit. The image viewer used to be called I have GNOME, and now it's just called the GNOME image viewer. But anyways, you can see from this, they're all basically the same, except Ubuntu uses Shotwell to manage like collections of, it's like Rhythmbox, but for pictures. The main differences here are the App Store. Fedora ships with just plain GNOME software and Ubuntu has its own Snap Store. Ubuntu ships with Thunderbird and email client. And of course they use different package managers. Fedora is RPM and DNF. Ubuntu is DPKG and apt, it's based on Debian. Fedora uses Flatpak to manage its sandboxed applications and things like that, though it doesn't appear to enable Flathub by default. So a lot of apps are available in the repos, but the popular ones that everybody uses, you'll have to actually opt into Flathub to get. Ubuntu uses the Snap Store, so you have all of those applications available to you by default from Ubuntu Snap Store. And I'm gonna be honest with you folks, I actually liked the Snap Store. Installing apps took forever, and of course, launching the apps after you install them takes forever, but the experience from the Snap Store and being able to find what you're looking for there and just install it, you can manage permissions straight from the Snap Store. You don't need a separate app. It's just a really good experience. I'm really impressed with how Snap has come along. GNOME software is fine too. I just like the Snap Store better. 
And as far as community repository support, Fedora has Copper and Ubuntu has the well-known PPAs. Next up, we're going to be looking at distro configs. This is a low level default that users wouldn't even really think of, but that's why I find it interesting. So starting at the top, the bootloader is Grub2 on both systems. Both distros are using systemd as the init setup. For mandatory ACLs and things like that, Fedora is well known for using SE Linux and Ubuntu is well known for using AppArmor. The CPU frequency driver is Intel CPU Freak, which is a modern CPU driver. It works just fine. Same with the CPU governor. Schedutil replaced, I think, on demand. But basically, this is the most modern and advanced CPU governor, so that's good. Now, the file system is a bit different, and I personally find BTRFS the superior file system over EXT4, not for performance, but for reliability and basically everything else. Now the next difference is in the disk scheduler. Fedora uses BFQ, which is barely fair queuing. No, it's actually budget fair queuing, but it's known for being quite a bit slower than actually most other disk schedulers. But if you're going for raw speed and you have to choose a scheduler, MQ deadline is typically better. And the last one here is Zswap algorithm. So Zswap is another one of those newer technologies that not every distro has adopted, but it really should because it doesn't have any drawbacks. There are several different algorithms that you can use for your ZRAM swap, and Fedora is using LZO RLE, which is the default on most distros that run swap or ZRAM swap. And now let's talk about software versions. Fedora is using the latest kernel at 5.19 point whatever, and Ubuntu is using 5.15. Now, a thing about Fedora's kernels and Fedora in general is that it is very much a moving target. And that might sound all good and fine, but the thing about kernels is when you have a new kernel, you oftentimes have to recompile a lot of modules. And there's a lot of third-party software that just doesn't work with the latest kernels. VMware and virtualization software is very sensitive to kernel updates. NVIDIA drivers are notoriously sensitive to kernel updates. They both use systemd and the systemd version is 2.50.8 on Fedora. It's 2.49.11 on Ubuntu. Fedora ships with an older xorg version. Now keep in mind that Wayland is the default and I'm not even sure if the xorg version matters when you run a non-Wayland application. You have to use the built-in X server. Fedora runs Mesa version 22.1 and Ubuntu is running 22.0. The NVIDIA driver version that Fedora ships with is 470. Ubuntu ships out of the box with 550, 510, 470, a bunch of different versions. The Vulkan version was the same, but the Pipewire versions were a bit different. 3.56 on Fedora, 3.48 on Ubuntu. And I thought this was pretty cool. Fedora doesn't even ship with Pulse Audio anymore. And now we finally reach the benchmarks. Well, gaming and benchmarks. So the first game I'm gonna show you is Dorian's Doors. And it's a game that's built in Godot, and it was built for a Linux game jam. I wasn't really expecting a whole lot from this machine in the way of 3D performance, but the very first room of Dorian's Doors is terribly laggy, unless you look at one of the back corners. And this is true for both distros. They actually ran basically the same, though I will say towards the end, I feel like Ubuntu ran a little bit better, but that could have been a number of different things. I don't know if I would say that Ubuntu just simply ran it better. It's hard to pick on the machine or the distro, considering this is a 3D game for a game jam, but hey, it ran right out of the box. It's basically a single binary. Neither distro had trouble running it, and I beat it, so cool. The next game is Super Tux Advance, and it's a spiritual successor to the venerable Super Tux and Super Tux 2 with a graphics aesthetic that is somewhat like a Game Boy Advance. This is a pretty cool game that I've been following for a while, and it makes for a pretty fun test because I had to compile the actual game engine, which is called Brux. It's built on SDL and uses Squirrel, and I discovered that Fedora ships the very latest and greatest version of Squirrel, which is not what Brux used. So getting everything to compile on Fedora was quite a chore, but I did it and everything ran just fine which isn't terribly surprising. I mean, it's a side scroller. 
But with super tucks in the background, let me show you these awesome benchmark numbers. Now these are interesting. I included Geekbench 5, Blender has some benchmarks that I use, really, really cool, and CSGO and War Thunder, which are both native Linux games. The Geekbench scores were a bit of a wash with Ubuntu taking first on the single core performance and Fedora taking first on the multi-core performance, but they are so similar that I really don't think that you would see any difference here at all. Now the Blender scores on the other hand were very interesting with Fedora taking first on the monster render and Ubuntu completely stumbling on the junk shop render. And I ran this probably five times and the best the Ubuntu got was two and SPM stands for samples per minute. So Ubuntu was only able to render 1.6 samples per minute for that particular scene. Now I think that this is important because it seems to illustrate some kind of problem with Ubuntu. It, it could be a, a kernel issue, something it doesn't like about my hardware, but if you wanted to render scenes or render videos or something and you had a CPU or hardware similar to mine, I don't know if Ubuntu would be a good choice for you. But on the flip side, Ubuntu did pull higher scores in the benchmark, 20.6 and 11.7 on CSGO and War Thunder respectively. Not that it's a huge difference above Fedora, but it was consistently higher on every sample I took. So what does all of this mean? Well, my personal takeaways from this are latest and greatest does not necessarily equal better or best, but I think everybody knows that by now. Ubuntu is actually a seemingly lighter weight distro than Fedora is, at least with this configuration. Obviously there's lots of other spins. You can make Fedora a lot lighter by picking a different flavor or just simply uninstalling or removing a bunch of stuff. There's nothing stopping Fedora from being as lightweight or lighter than Ubuntu. These are just the defaults out of the gate. A lot of people complain about Fedora and SE Linux. I didn't even know SE Linux was running when I did any of this. It, it didn't pop up with any errors or anything. So if you're interested in Fedora and SE Linux is what's holding you back, don't even worry about it. It's so transparent now that it's just running in the background just like AppArmor does. And one thing that I love about Fedora is that it makes for an excellent reference if you're looking at what the latest and greatest software and packages look like when they're like running and installed on a system. Fedora was one of the first distros, if not the first distro to implement Zswap, OOMD, the BTRFS file system. I think OpenSUSE did that first, but Fedora has been rocking BTRFS for a long time, if not just optional and default. Uh, the very latest kernel versions, uh, see what it's like to run without pulse audio. Fedora is just really, really good for the cutting, if not bleeding edge stuff. Ubuntu, on the other hand, is the opposite. It's known for being, especially like the LTS versions of Ubuntu are known for being very stable and shipping mostly sane packages. Though I have had some issues with Ubuntu kernels in the past, they are not perfect, but they're pretty darn close if you're looking for an enterprise ready Debian based distro. I wanted to do this comparison because I really like these versus comparison videos, but also because Ubuntu is probably the most popular Linux distro, at least one that everybody knows, and Fedora is catching up. I hear about it all the time. I know a lot of people in the community that are working on it, and it gets compared to Ubuntu a lot, but they're really not the same. They're quite a bit different. But I think that that's what makes this sort of comparison video interesting, that they are very different, and for all intents and purposes, they perform about the same. These types of comparison versus videos are a lot of fun, but a lot of work to make. So if you found this video useful, it might help somebody, feel free to share it around. If you have any comments or recommendations, things that I could add to the video and the charts or things to benchmark, you can let me know in the comments, or I'm still using the DistroDelve's GitHub repo. This video format is honestly a bit like DistroDelve's. It's like if I took a DistroDelve episode and combined it with a regular benchmark style video that I do. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.